This is now the last of four videos sharing some outreach activities that I've done with children over the past decade plus relating astronomy to Harry Potter's universe. This one we're going to be talking about the moons of Jupiter. The students at Hogwarts really dreaded Aurora Sinistra's essay that she assigned on the moons of Jupiter. Remember that Aurora Sinistra gets her name from the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. So how many moons does Jupiter have? Well, at last count, Jupiter had 79 known moons. Now, most of them are very small, and some of these small moons include captured asteroids. Four of these 79 moons are very large and important, and we call them the Galilean moons because this gentleman over here, Galileo Galilei, discovered them over 400 years ago. He was looking at the planet Jupiter with his small telescope, which was no better than a pair of binoculars today, and over many nights, he watched what looked like stars near Jupiter appear to shift position. So obviously they were not stars, they were objects orbiting around Jupiter. They were moons. Fortunately, Hermione agreed to help her friends on the essay. And when she read over the draft, she was very, very disappointed. She said, Jupiter's biggest moon is Ganymede, not Callisto. And it's Io that's got volcanoes. Europa's covered in ice, not mice. Hermione was right. Io's the one with the volcanoes. If you look at these beautiful pictures, not taken from the surface of the Earth, but from unmanned space probes that flew closer to Jupiter than any human has ever been, you see that there is definitely a volcanic eruption off the side of this moon. In fact, most of these features that we're seeing on the surface of Io are volcanic in nature. I like to think of Io as looking sort of like a rotten pepperoni pizza. And Europa has ice, not mice. In fact, the, it's sort of like an ice skating pond. You have cracks in the surface of the ice and the water comes up and it seals these cracks. Just like in an ice skating pond, if there's a crack, water will ooze up and freeze, and you will see cracks going through the ice. What are we going to do with this information? What I like to do with young people, and people who aren't quite as young, but young at heart and are adventurous, is to make a scale model of Jupiter and its moons, and to compare it to the Earth and our moon. So you're going to need a lot of space if you're going to do this model. We're going to do a scale model of the diameters of these objects and their distances apart. And my scale is going to be that one centimeter equals 1,000 kilometers. Now, if you don't happen to have a centimeter ruler around, if you just have inches ruler, you can do this in inches as well and have one inch be equivalent to 1,000 kilometers. So if we look here, you see that Io, you're going to cut out a circle where Io is going to be 3.6 centimeters in diameter, and you're going to place it 422 centimeters away from Jupiter. And we also have the size and distance of Europa and Ganymede and Callisto. So you're going to see that you're going to need a lot of room to spread this out. And then we're going to make Jupiter. And Jupiter is going to be 139.8 centimeters wide. So Jupiter is going to be a big boy. Earth is going to be 12.7 centimeters on the scale. The Earth is 3.4 centimeters, and you're going to place the moon 384 centimeters away from the Earth. Now you might have heard of the Great Red Spot. The Great Red Spot is an atmospheric feature in Jupiter's incredibly gaseous atmosphere and it's the envelope that surrounds it. Jupiter is one of these gas giants. It's a giant soft and squishy poisonous slush puppy. And the Great Red Spot's been around for at least a few hundred years, but its size has changed. It's actually gotten smaller in the last century. 
So if you want to make the great red spot to scale, make it about 15 centimeters long and about 12 centimeters high. Here you see some people actually making the model. When I do this with large groups of children, for example, if you were doing this with a Girl Scout troop or uh, any other group of a class of students, I usually make uh, these cardboard tracers that are the right size and then just have the students cut them out. And I like to make them different colors to make it easier to relate to. And here's my great red spot. And you can see that for Jupiter, I've made a template that's actually a quadrant. It's actually a quarter of the size of Jupiter. And then you just make three other pieces of exactly the same size, and then you can just tape them together. And I find that newspaper works really well because again, this is going to be very large. And here we have uh, some taller people helping us set this up because Jupiter is very big and you can see that Jupiter here is holding on to some strings and the young people are walking the correct distance away to hold where the moons are. So you, if you have some string and you want to do that, that's fine. Or if you just want to pace out the distance and have people hold the moons or put the moons where they're supposed to be. But it gives you an idea of the scale of the Jupiter system of its large moons. And then also, again, you're going to make a model showing the scale on the same scale of the Earth and our moon. Here are some questions for you to ponder. Compare the Earth-Moon distance to the distance between the Galilean moons and Jupiter. What do you notice? Rank the Galilean moons from largest to smallest. How does our moon compare? How many Earths can stretch across Jupiter? How many can stretch across the Great Red Spot? Compare the relative size of our moon to Earth. How many moons could stretch across the Earth? And then repeat this for Jupiter and one of its moons. Do you notice a difference? If you've gone through all four of these videos, congratulations, you've officially passed the astronomy part of your OWLS exam, and we can now call you astronomy wizards. So now wizards, go explore the universe and share what you've learned with other people. Thanks for watching, comments are always welcomed, and please check out our website at www.ccsu.edu astronomy.